There we go. All right, D and D prep. Let's get it going. Much brighter. Uh, I fade in kind of a little bit of a haze, huh? Just trying to get it bright enough so I can still read. Get back in here and we'll F11 it. Here's a free version, so who knows? I might not be able to get as much stuff as I think I can. But we will see. Oh, more than enough. More than enough. Okay. Let's see here. Ooh. Dungeon Master's Guide. Lucky dice set. That's all we need. All right, now real quick, I need to check because I believe there is a map building, let's see, a world of your own, the big picture, gods of your world, map in your campaign, let's see, creating a multiverse, I don't know about that one, let's, let's stick to the basics, elements, Dungeons, mapping dungeons, mapping wilderness. Okay, we'll get to, looks like we're gonna need a dose of chapter five and chapter one. Mapping your campaign, 14. Now that might mean mapping as in storyboarding. And that should be okay. Kingdom scale. Here, should I have it show the book? Straight from the source, huh? Straight from the source. Shwoop. Oh, wow, you won't be able to read that at all. Well, just gonna have to deal with that. With my head down, because I will be checking out the source material. Okay. Mapping your campaign. When creating a world where your campaign takes place, you want a map. You can take one of two approaches with it. Top down or bottom up. Some DMs like to start at the top, creating a big picture of the world at the start of the campaign by having a map that shows the whole continents and then zooming in on smaller areas. Other DMs prefer to go the opposite direction, starting with a small campaign area that is... Okay, okay. I get that. Ah, Sophie's here. If you guys want to see Sophie, here. So, hi. Hi. Sophie can. She always likes to come up and visit. She gets FOMO really bad. And actually, is he still behind? Wait, there he is. That little guy right there. There's the orange bastard. Right now he's resting. Let's pray he continues to, to rest. I don't know if I can handle it if he starts getting up. Uh, I'll be, I'll be uh, quite honest. Ah, oh, Sophie, I know it's a book. You've never seen books before. Come on. All right, so that's two interesting approaches. All right, so the cool thing about like this little map creator, right? We go, this will be, I don't know, we'll decide what it is, right? But I kind of want to make it a whole continent. I kind of want to go from the top down. So this will create our land. So maybe we have a country like this where it's a nut shape. It's like, why'd that happen? And then we can link it to like, ah, oh, the gods did I don't know, it's like this now. But, I don't know, it also doesn't have to be. And so we will get that out of there. For now. For now. But, that's a, like a cool example of like what it could be. So, you can even do like a bunch of little, like, different sized islands. And each of them has a settlement with like some mountains. And a lot of the camping can take place on a boat. Do that too. Hmm. So many good ideas. What I would hope was hoping the book had was a way to roll dice. Like, oh, roll dice for this, blah blah blah. Because that would be cool. Let's just keep reading. I might still have it. So, we know province combining scales. 
was talking about hexes. I'm going to put the hexes on later. Is there a way to put a scale on? Oh. Hello. And then there's perfect circles. I see. That's a little sus. Okay. Yeah. Because I'll say true. We can always play with the options real quick. Grid options. Show. Cool. Now we can make their... Okay, yeah, that doesn't really, don't really matter, huh? Advanced settings. Uh, I see. Hmm. All right. Settlements, purpose, local color, home base. A village is a population up to a thousand. That's kind of nuts. I think a village would be smaller, but I guess town is six thousand, cities twenty five. Ooh, Lord. My cities have been so small in past sessions. Definitely not that big. Forms of government. Hey, we can roll for forms of government. <laughs> it just feels like my, my economy class. We have autocracy, bureaucracy, confederacy, democracy, dictatorship, feudalism, um, hierarchy, kleptocracy, Klep kleptocracy, kleptocracy. Why can't I speak, dude? Why am I stupid? Okay. Government is composed of groups or individuals primarily seeking the wealth for themselves, often at the expense of their subjects. Ah, uh, Electrum. Sadly, we do not use you. Simple factions. Faction names are actually pretty cool. The good stuff with like starting a world and stuff to do is always think of stuff like what would you want to do as a player? You know, like what stuff that interests you that's like, oh man, it'd be so cool if we were part of like this faction and we were to get certain perks like let's say you're part of this faction and it lends out stuff for adventurers so it's like you don't own a boat as an adventuring party instead of renting you could get your own boat um because sometimes it's difficult to convince random town folk random fishers to be like hey bring us to this island yeah it's dangerous but we're going i don't know about that so unless you got like you're in with the good with the government which or the local town authorities which sometimes depending on who your rogue is isn't the case and no one's no one's safe. Oh, you see that mitten? Hi, Sophie. Listen, I don't know if you... Alright. Sophie, say hi. Say hi. Over here. Over here. Oh, come on, man. There we go. Little Sophie. She helping us out. 
a little bit out of time. Okay. I know, there is nothing on the map yet, but we're getting there. I'm doing my reading, you know, checking out. Going over all the stuff that I might. Teleportation circles, bro. I, I love, I love that. I love that. That would be a nice faction buff. Like, oh, you're in this faction, blah, 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 blah. Teleportation circles to other factions. Like, oh my god. Okay. Restrictions on magic. Sophie keeps trying to sneak into my lap. Listen, you get back over there. Not today. A home base. I've always played personally and then DM'd more nomadic games where, you know, you go set up camp and whatnot. But I wouldn't be opposed to having, like, a space of, like, home or whatever. Like, the Yawning Portal. Like, the whole tavern in that. That's super cool. I definitely plan to take elements from those books and bring them up in this campaign that I'm creating. So, for those of you that are here and are want to check this out, so or at least want to get the lay of the land, the idea. Right, so, I'm going to be starting a d and group. I used to do them a lot of times to my friends, right? And it's been a couple of years, you know? Uh, we've never, like, fully committed to an online. Now I'm going to try to get this maybe up here so I'm a bit more clear. But, um... We never fully committed to an online one. But about a couple months ago, I ended up purchasing the... Let me check. I can check my Steam. Now you guys can look at my Steam. I have, like, the, the Fantasy Grounds. That's what it is. I bought Fantasy Grounds, and I got, like, all the books and stuff. So now all they need to do is make an account, and then I have everything, and I can share it to them. Um, hello? Oh, grandma a good morning text all right so yeah back to that but I've never really fully committed to an online game and it's hard to schedule as you get older and stuff gets more you know school work girlfriends boyfriends so it, whoever how so it goes it gets hard to plan out this stuff but I'm really committed and want to get uh, a nice custom game going something a bit different that we've done have not done before um, as well as like friendly to new players because I think we're gonna have a couple fairly new maybe their first time ever playing D&D &D or a role-play game, but uh, my friend group's really cool super into like I don't know Lord of the Rings and everything else and a lot of fantasy stuff, so it should be good. I'm gonna try to incorporate um, Obviously good adventure good story, but I also want to get some like horror elements get it scary kind of hit the curse of Strahd notes where some parts are like really freaky. So I'm gonna try to play with that a little bit. Um, but first things first, I wanna make a continent and do some world building. So I'm bringing out the Dungeon Dragon Masters book. And I could have swore it had like a table to roll, but I'm not seeing that. <sighs> All right, to the table of contents again, because there was, what was it? Page 99. It'll be like mapping of things, and that's what we're that's where we're at. Hello, where are we right now? Ah, uh, this has to do with like NPC stuff. I see. Villains method. Agricultural devastation. <laughs> I 
I'm a bad guy and I'm making all your crops die. Simple. Simple, simple. Alright, dungeon location. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Okay, cool. This is this can give us some really good ideas. So we're gonna need a D one hundred. Um, you're just gonna have to trust me because if I if I point my webcam down, you won't really see the rolls. Anywho, so we're gonna get our two D tens out. Come on. Sophie, come on now. Ow, ow, ow. So if we got some sharp claws, baby. Okay, so let's first let's freehand a continent. Sophie. <laughs> Ted. Okay. So at some point I'll definitely want them to go on a boat. Or maybe Okay. Let's start off with symmetry, because I'm a big symmetry person. So, and then we can always change it from there. I think symmetry is kind of pleasing to look at as well. We could make it like the hunter hunter world where everything's like right there. Uh, I think I'm digging this. And we'll give it some more unique flair. This will just be a good beginning. All right. And what we'll do is we'll have some island in the middle. And this isn't really an island. This is like a huge this will be a huge settlement uh yeah so idea right now right so four kingdoms right or whatever they turn out to be or loosely but this will be the main trade hub right middle big main trade hub maybe right here we'll add a super small the only one of its kind a feat of architecture. That's ass. <laughs> right. We gotta subtract. Let's subtract that. Okay. Add. Yeah, okay. Okay. Let's, let's subtract that again. Okay. Ooh! Wrong one. Wrong one. Okay. Perfect. And then we go down to this. And we get that now. Uh, 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 That's not bad for like a one-time price. I should say a one-time price, but uh, grid options. Hey, oh, that's more like it. Make it make this place huge. Okay, I think that's fair. What, you make each one of these, oh no, we can make them a bit smaller, but like each one a mile. Uh, let's see, that would be, I'm trying to do some quick math, so five, 10, round 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, okay. Well, about 40 miles across. 40 miles is what? Like 40 minutes, 30 minutes by car sometimes. At least for, for how do I get to my town? So, for like an area that's fully like civilized, that could be a pretty wide area. 
whatever. It's just a framework, people. Framework. It's going to be fine. I promise. Okay. What do we got here? Filter options. We don't really need filter options. Text. Uh, stamps. Stamp off. Nice if it were a bridge or something. Or a road. Give me a road. Perfect. Another, and uh, we'll do another. Oh God! Oh God! Oh Lord! Oh Lord! I've done it now. Oh, bro! <laughs> I keep, I keep making new bridges. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Oh my Lord! I am the worst. All right, delete. Let's really get in here. Okay. Bridge. Last bridge. Okay. Now. Delete. Now. Okay. Not subtract the bridges. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Hey, stop it. Why well, have that option? Why is it that button? Okay. Need a destroy bridge button. Just a little bit. Let's see. Man. There it is. Okay. Oh God, this is. Okay, perfect. I might need to mess with the grid, grid options a little bit. Okay, that's a lot easier on my on my frail eyes. Okay. I want this to be back to being. Okay, that's more center. Okay. All right. Over here, well, no, we can maybe a dwarven, dwarvish civilization because you know they're always classical into architecture, you know. So first things first, we are going to roll for the first dungeon location, and I'll have it take place in one of these areas, and we will then build that first country off uh, this first dungeon. So. Where will the dungeon be? Anywhere from a swamp to a building in a city, sea caves, mountain pass. So right here, two dice. And the number is 50 on the dot. Okay. In a glacier. That's pretty cool. First dungeon taking place in a glacier. Okay. Stamp tools for snow. Okay. Come on, give me the stamp. Oh, give my catalog. Snow trees. Is there a way to get snowy ground? Because that would be pretty cool. I am. Okay. Back up to here. Or would that be here? 
Wasteland white. Ice, snow. Snow would be good. Let's get some snow going. Oh, man. $5 a month. Hmm. No snow, huh? Guess we're using white. glacier be okay snow snow so we'll make this area pretty white up here right it'll have it slowly start to dissipate right as it trickles down half this continent snow which means this one kind of has to be snowy as well that's okay we can deal with that all right i think that snow looks pretty well and uh, right up here we can come in and let's see if we have a stamp that we could use for a glacier of some kind. Snowy hills are nice. Mountain snow. I think we're going to run into the problem of premium again. Saving that one. So this is the only stuff we can use. There's not a whole lot. We get brown hills, we don't get snowy hills. Dang, okay, okay. Orc village. Let's play, let's play with some, some pointy trees. Okay, cluster of five. Can you do like clusters? Uh... Oh. oh no. <laughs> oh no. The drag tool isn't as <laughs> um, methodical as I thought it would be. Okay. Select it. No, I don't want to select all, but selecting like all of the trees would be <laughs> be nice. I see this why we why we do layers, huh? If I just backspace these, okay, okay, okay. There is different textures for these snow trees. This there's has to be a better way. But, I mean, it's working for now. You know what? Let's say, let's let's stay away from these tiny details. We don't need these tiny details yet. Uh, let's do, I think, we, I think they had a mountain stamp, right? Cave. Okay. Mountain. We can do mountains. All right, stay away. Classic, like mountain range esque, you know, some brown mountains over here. We'll do it. Let's make it more geologically believable. So we'll do it. Arrange kind of like here. Up and going. I think that's pretty good. Because when mountains form like that, it's usually over like a fault line. So maybe I'll put like some sea volcanoes around here or something that makes the sea really rough. I think that's a good idea. So there we go, we got some mountains. But what am I gonna make into a glacier? 
that's where the first dungeon is going to be. And I was going to put the dungeon kind of here and maybe have the first settlement. Here, we'll do we'll do get stuff like Rough Draft, Rough Draft, uh, Fortified City, Human City. Human City, boom. We'll place Human City in roughly the starting point um, right here. A nice city, huh? a port city. And to finish off the port city, put a little boat. Put a boat. We'll rotate said boat. Oh, 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 okay. Maybe we won't. Can we flip the boat? Flip, flip. Yeah, perfect. Uh, size of the boat. Perfect. You still see it's. Oh. Alright, buddy, sorry. You're gonna have to. Boop, okay. So this will be our first city, first settlement. This will be the start of the campaign, right? This area right here. Maybe I'll make, maybe I will stop putting boats everywhere. And uh, human city one, we'll make, make you bigger. Decently sized city, you know? Move you right there, perfect. Okay. I have to go back in here anyway. Something I can use as a glacier. Really nothing I can use as a glacier. Not unless I did the pro version. I can always get this roughly whatever. So I can put a spot for the glacier that I can draw over it later. So let's just do dungeons, right, as caves. So we'll put a cave up here that leads to like a glacier or something. Perfect. Okay, that's a good marker. And we can, can we rename them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we can or can't. All right, so first dungeon taking place in the glacier. Um, let's see. The next is the dungeon's creator. Who created the dungeon? For that, we're gonna need a d20. And, got one right here. It's gonna be a 10. So 10 is giants. Giants created the dungeon. I need that like, I need to get a Google Doc. That's what kind of what I need. Let's get a Google Doc out. Gmail, not Gmail. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> come on, Google Doc. Why can't I click it, dude? Come on now. Boom. Let's do D and D prep. Okay. So, we know we have a big continent. Location. First dungeon. My little dungeon. Glacier. Created by giants. All right. What is in it now, I guess. So, was originally created by dungeons, is now inhabited by seven. An elemental fire cult 
in a glacier. Oh my god, I am so white right now. It's crazy. Let's see if I can turn my light down a bit and help that. I think most of that's just from the monitor, huh? All right. Created by giants. Well, now inhabited by Elemental fire cultists. Now that's nuts because we're in a glacier. <laughs> so, so if you please stop standing on the dice. I know they're fun. Okay. All right. Uh, now we can roll for their alignment. Okay. Bet. People in the dungeon triggered an eight. Um. Lawful neutral. So. Alright, cool. I guess this will be. I think we're like rolling for like the leader. By the leader, I mean like the leader of like the cult. So they're lawful neutral. Their class is 20, a wizard. Ooh. And the dungeon purpose. The purpose, natural cabin, dungeon crafted, okay. This will be, this will really set the tone for like, I guess, the adventure. 18. A tomb. Okay. Tomb. Okay, we can do a lot of cool stuff with this so far. This is really, really cool. So first dungeon to glacier created by giants. All right, we'll clean this up too. This will be more digestible. It's just so I have it down right in front of me. Um, dungeon history, bet. Roll the one again. That is a 14. Uh, creators destroyed by natural disaster. This goes over mapping the dungeon, but I'll map the dungeon myself. I'll do that on like some paper and then I'll maybe Microsoft paint it. Opening a secret door, blah, 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 blah. Okay, is there anything else? Hour by hour approach, travel montage approach. Um, Features, monster layers, monuments. Uh, where is local monsters? Okay, this is kind of cool. So, a one sealed burial mound or pyramid. Okay, Let's see if I can work that in. Okay, back to this. All right, 
So now what we're going to do, because basically we're going to, depending on the roll, oh my lord, this is where easier to like center fifth screen. They are asking you shall receive, okay? All right. So this will be the first dungeon and the stuff we've laid out. It's going to be, uh, will be a glacier here. We'll be in a glacier, fire, cultist. Okay, cool. First dungeon, done. Uh, is there a way to start a new layer? I'd love to. Uh, object. Whatever. Doesn't matter. So we go back to the beginning, right? Because we're going to fill out basically this continent based on like the dungeons and the adventures and then I don't know we'll see once it looks full enough and then we'll we'll stop so the next dungeon location will be determined by a d100 got our two right here all right we roll and that is a 13 so 13 is beneath a graveyard we're having a lot of like death and demise so beneath a graveyard would be a good spot beneath a graveyard so we're going up here for the glacier right now specifically a graveyard this could be good so we're gonna we're trying to do like this is a giant hub city so I guess let's put a big let's see if I have any bigger ones fortified city keep uh, we'll just do this for now. This is going to be you know, big. Big, big, big. We'll put that there. Um, we can catalog again. And what is something we could use to signify like a graveyard? Um, sure, some dead trees. Right? Because this will be, I don't know. So it'll be like the players get here, right? And they've just, they completed this. They're level four, maybe level five, six, right? And they're like, you know what? Like now we're going to the big city. We got some coin in our pocket, you know? Boom, we're making it to the big travel, like big city. Like let's go, let's go see what's going on, right? And as they get there, stuff starts going awry, right? Just when they thought everything was smooth sailing, you just hear it, there's talk something happening in the mass graveyard now the mass graveyard but we can say the history is like I should I should get the Google Doc out again I don't know I'll keep talking about it a little bit I'm, I'm excited so we can say the mass graveyard can be like there was an ancient battle for this island initially because it's in such a prime location but when it's surrounded on all sides sure but as far as shipping and trade goes come on you couldn't ask for better so Put the graveyard right here and generations upon generations of shenanigans so if you know dice <laughs> stop <laughs> okay now let's go to the Google Doc let's go to the Google Doc and get this written okay so we're gonna hit the boop 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 second dungeon is a graveyard um, I see okay okay the dungeons creator let's see It says cultist or religious group. But we just did a cultist and re religious group for the fire elementals. So theoretically, we'll do we'll keep this as a placeholder and we'll roll everything else, but if it's still be weird, we're going to go back and re-roll this specific one. So, uh, graveyard I guess this one isn't 
last one was created by giants. So this created, oh, created by cultists. We'll give this a chance. Um, and cultists and religious groups. Let's see. That is an 11, which is worshippers of an evil deity. 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 All right. Um, let's make sure... I guess the Yeti. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. <sighs> Worship is of an evil deity. Um, we'll say. Let me get my uh, get me a sip of my drink real quick. <sighs> Delicious. Okay. Who will be the leader? What will their alignment be? 20. Chaotic evil. Okay. Chaotic evil. Boom. That is... Okay, we're getting somewhere. I'm starting to like this. I'm starting to like this a lot. Okay, and his class. What will his class be? 3. A chaotic evil cleric. Okay. And the dungeon's purpose. Oh, oh. Landed on weird. Oh no, on thick carpets. We're gonna reroll up here. Uh, Nineteen, which is a tomb. We did just get a tomb, and technically it is a graveyard, right? But is that their purpose? It's already a graveyard. Okay, we're gonna reroll that. But if it's tomb again, I guess is we're going for, huh? It shit you not was a nineteen. The shit you not it was it was a nineteen again. So that tomb it is two tombs, <laughs> and obviously we can I don't know we can make the dungeons like I personally I scale wherever my players want to go. So if they don't end up going to this second, oh, it can just be whatever you know whatever, and we'll we'll scale it up or we'll scale it down. So maybe they'll get two tombs in a row. Maybe they won't get two tombs in a row. Mm. <laughs> Till then, we build purpose tomb. Okay. Um, the history is a four, which is abandoned due to plague. Due to plague. Let's say spell play. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Google. Um, and then I think that's it. Sealed. Yeah, I think that's it. History creators, destroyed by natural disaster, and then I had sealed burial mound. So where did I get that from? Hmm. I just keep turning pages until I find another little thingy. Oh, it's a monument. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, for each one, I was just going to throw in a monument somewhere around the area. Just to make it more exciting, so that's what it was. I should have read it down. So the monument around this area will be 16, um, a great stone arc. Okay, cool. I'm going to put this in bold, bold. Okay, back to here. 
So I'm gonna leave right here for a second. I'm gonna use the restroom. I will be back. BRB. Till then, you'll get Sophie Cam. If if webcam will stay up in this position. There you go, Sophie. Keep them entertained.
I have returned. <laughs> oh, there's a Sonder Chi in chat, huh? I'll keep it on the Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Did you keep everyone company? Did you keep them company? What, you want me to get Samson? He's all snuggled up on the... Here, I'll show you. Oh, let me turn this way. There you go. Yeah, he's all snuggled up. I'm not going to go get him. He's too... He's too tie tie. <sighs> oh fuck what happened is the stream can you still hear me oh, I was telling Sophie to get me why does my camera do that like for some reason the camera's all it stopped it's very annoying I wonder if I diselect the whatever it'll bring it back so I go to this that's closed and then I go back to it yeah I know the camera froze I'm trying to fix it I go back to it uh, there we go okay cool back online back online it's just weird every now and then I don't know what happens it just it's like sorry pa and just fucking gives up so, Sandra, I am slowly building a D&D &D map, right? And how I'm building is one I made, right, like countries, right? We'll have each of these countries, right, or lands. And this mainland is the, like, huge trade pub. So there will be a lot of ship sailing and ship going because, I, I, you know, one piece, right? So, uh, yeah. So this will be the main trade hub because it's in the middle of everything, easy access. I'm going to have this one be Dwarven inspired because it's close and it actually built a bridge. So that'll be cool, like the only mechanical uh, access point. Um, so far, I'm building the how I'm building the world is I'm setting up dungeons and I roll. Like I have the the D&D book right here and the it helps me, I don't know, come up with cool ideas and stuff I wouldn't think of. So I'll go and show you, if I go to my Google Doc, the first dungeon, right? I hear about cult, then under cemetery dungeon. Ah, oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so I'll go over it real quick. So the first dungeon is going to take place in a glacier, right? And I don't know if in the glacier or on the glacier, but the ruins or whatever ends up being was created by giants. However, it's now been inhabited by elemental fire cultists which is wild because it's like in a glacier their leader is uh neutral lawful neutral and he's a wizard um the dungeon's purpose it's a tomb and a tomb for the giants um the history is creators destroyed by natural disaster and i was thinking like maybe they were part they were a giant civilization that was initially part of like an ice land right a pit place made of ice and their sect was this huge glacier that broke off. And they knew they'd be able to survive for a little bit off the ocean. But with no trees, no natural, no nothing they could go do, they eventually ran out of materials. You know, and they eventually uh, died out. Um, now the glacier floats around. And it's kind of like a moving dungeon. Um, now... There will be a monument somewhere. So uh, in each dungeon, I'm also doing like a geographical like thing nearby. So this one, I ended up rolling a sealed burial mo se sealed burial mound or pyramid. Um, but down to the second dungeon, right? It was created by cultists, um, worships an evil deity, and it's a, their leader is a chaotic evil cleric. Um, the purpose is also a tomb. Now for what? I'm not sure, but the history of the dungeon is it was an initially abandoned due to the plague. And there's a monument of a great stone arc. So I was thinking it could take place outside of this main city because there's so much like death. Just because it's the biggest like city in this whole area. 
so there's just a mass grave site as well as there's probably battles fought on this island to see who could take control of it and whatnot for years so glacier l plus environmental plus ratio plus l l l l lol glacier idiot lol uh but now we do this the third third dungeon so great stone arc we'll work that in all right time to get rolling okay we get out our d100s all right let's see what it's gonna be right here Swoop. is going to be a 33 so it chasm <laughs> work denied vacation really that's so wild. Did they give a reason? Dungeon creator. Must be after June 27th. That is so odd. What is the point of like... Oh, it's your vacation. Schedule a vacation. Oh, but it can't be like the first six months of the year. It's like, bruh. But that's okay. I mean, we can always schedule either a shorter trip to Japan. And I guess use days. I don't know. Or we could just do it later. It's up to us, really. So we'll, do, we'll just have to talk and decide. <sighs> Dungeon Crater. Let's go. Seven. Dwarves. Perfect. I know where I'm putting this dungeon. Dwarf. Let's see here. Giant Chasm. Dwarves. Um, but now... smooth hmm it's just because I haven't been here a year yet I see I mean that's cause so odd you know I think it'd be like oh, I have this planned out months in advance but I get it you know there's rules Okay, it is a dungeon, okay, so cults and religious groups, so we could just, I don't know, we could decide stuff for ourselves, so there's, it was created by dwarves, and on the map it'll be, in this island, it'll be a chasm. We'll send them there for some reason, and they'll stumble across the dungeon as well. So let's open our catalog. Do we have anything that like resembles the chasm in our in the the free? Not really, huh? Not really. Well, we'll get our mountains. It's bound to be some mountains. That's a big ass mountain. All right. And we'll put some right along here. We'll do the chasm in between these mountains. Have this mountain range kind of should probably mixed in some bigger mountains, but I'll I'll polish it over to make it look a little bit better. 